Hey guys, welcome to my review of the films which I've been to see in March of this year. Now, I'm having to make this video in uh, two sections, or two parts even, because there'd be no way for me to review all seven of the films that I've been to see in one ten minute video. So I've decided to review four this video, and three in the next. So, with that being said, the first film is Alice in Wonderland, a sequel to the original Alice in Wonderland films. I thought it was just a reimagining of Lewis Carroll's books, but no, it was a it was a sequel. The visuals of Wonderland are probably the only reasons to see this film because it's not mind-blowingly awesome. It's just okay, even in 3D. Uh, Johnny Depp as the Mad Hatter, I was a little bit disappointed at. I was expecting more. He goes from a character with a girl's lisp to a Scottish accent, which I thought was a little strange. Also, at times it was hard for me not to think of Jack Sparrow when watching Johnny Depp playing the Mad Hatter. Also, the girl who played Alice, I don't know her name, but Arachna Times is really bad. For instance, when she, she sees the white rabbit and she's like, There it is, did you see it? Yeah, you should know by now, I can't do a girl's voice. It, it was good to see the characters from the original films back. For instance, the Caterpillar and... Tweedledum and Tweedledee, all voiced by incredibly famous actors, which was good to hear. There were some bits which I really liked more than others, simply because of the characters. The scene with the frogs all in a line is funny, simply because the frogs, and frogs are cool. Also, the March Hare is probably the most amusing character to watch. The Jabberwocky was fantastic in 3D, which was good because the characters hyped us up so much by mentioning all the bloody time. Uh, voiced by Christopher Lee as well, which is awesome. Overall, not a bad film. If you're a fan of Tim Burton and his unique style, or if you're about 10 years old, then you'll probably love this film, but it's not everyone's cup of tea. The second film is Crazy Heart. Hang on, let me just get a drink. <coughs> Crazy Heart. Now, there isn't much to the storyline. All it's about is an old alcoholic country singer trying to make a living. I can describe it by saying that it's like the wrestler but with music instead of wrestling if that makes any sense whatsoever. If you've seen it you'll probably understand. I found it ironic that Bad Blake's first gig in the film was at a bowling alley. If you've seen The Big Lebowski then you'll probably understand. The acting from everyone involved is excellent especially from Jeff Bridges who won an Oscar for his for best actor and he really deserved it. He put everything he had into the character Bad Blake. <clears throat> Throughout the film he starts to fall in love with a reporter played by Maggie Gyllenhaal. One thing I did not expect to see was Jeff Bridges and Maggie Gyllenhaal make a sexy time. The scenes when Bad Blake is talking to his manager are really amusing because the manager is trying to do everything to help kickstart Bad Blake's career again. but. Blake simply can't be bothered. Um, Colin Fowle and Robert Duvall also star in the film. Even though they're two brilliant actors, they don't get an awful lot of screen time. This is good because even though the director got two of the best actors to sign on to this film, he doesn't overdo it. The soundtrack I highly recommend to everyone. Um, I think all the songs sung by Bad Blake in the film were sung by Jeff Bridges and all around the soundtrack. Overall, a brilliant film with a lot of soul, and I highly recommend it to everyone. Third film, Green Zone, from the same people who brought you The Bourne Ultimatum, starring Matt Damon and directed by Paul Greengrass. Now, I read a brief summary on the film before going in to see it, and after reading it all, I wondered how it would be different to all the other films, which have very similar storylines. It was very fast-paced, didn't seem to drag at all, which is good. The action is very exciting to watch. Filmed brilliantly as though you were actually there because of all the jolty camera work. The other actors and actresses in the film are great. Jason Isaacs is brilliant as is Brendan Gleeson, obviously. And not much more to say, really. Overall, it's a very fast-paced, exciting film. Definitely want to check out if you're a fan of this type of film. The fourth film, Shutter Island, what can I say, another masterpiece by the best director of all time, Martin Scorsese, 
about US Marshal Teddy Daniels, who was sent to investigate the disappearance of a woman from a mental institute on a remote island. Leonardo DiCaprio as, da- as Teddy Daniels, who starts to suffer from violent flashbacks of him in the war and haunting dream sequences whilst visiting Shutter Island, keeps you wondering what the hell is happening. The acting, as you've guessed, is superb from everyone, especially DiCaprio. The script I found to be brilliantly wrought. I want to be honest with you, the movie did start to drag a little at the end because I think it's on for about two and a half hours, which is a long time, but overall it's a great film from Scorsese and DiCaprio and a great twist ending. I'm not going to go in depth with anything else because I don't want to spoil anything for you people who haven't seen it, but this is definitely one to check out if you have time. At the start of this video, I said I was going to review for this video and review the other three films that I want to see in part two, but I've got enough time to review one more, so I'll review Kick Ass and The Blind Side next video. But here I'll be talking about I Love You, Philip Morris. Now, this is one I was a bit apprehensive to go and see simply because it's a gay rom com about an everyday family man who, after a car accident, confesses to being gay and becomes a con man. This puts him in jail where he meets Philip Morris and the two immediately fall in love. It was entertaining to see Hugh McGregor and Jim Carrey play gay characters. As for the film, the majority of it is a comedy with adult humour and some scenes which may be inappropriate for some people, like when Jim Carrey's character Stephen Russell is having sex with some guy who you believe to be his wife. A very, very funny scene, but somewhat disturbing when you think about it. It's also good to see how Steve escapes out of jail numerous times. This film isn't your typical comedy movie. It has some very funny scenes in, like I say, but it has also got some serious moments as well. It's definitely one of a kind. If you're fan of Jim Carrey and you want to see him as a gay character, then you should enjoy this film, but other than that, it isn't one of the best released this month. Come on, I can do this. The sixth film is Kick-Ass. At first I thought this movie would be overrated. This is before I saw it, because M.I. gave it a five star. A couple of other magazines and newspapers gave it a five star, and watching the trailer, I couldn't see why. I wasn't all that impressed with it, but after seeing the film, I can say that I was completely wrong. This is probably the most entertaining movie released this year. To give you a brief summary, basically it's about an ordinary nerdy kid who is in love with comic books and is invisible to other girls, who buys a cheap costume off the internet and goes around attempting to beat up bad guys calling himself Kick-Ass. But it turns out that he's bitten off more than he can chew when he becomes the target of crime lord Frank D'Amico. This film wasn't as I expected it to be, I thought it would just be a comedy, but it has a dark quality to it at times. Yeah, If I get to compare it to something, I would say Spider-Man meets Taxi Driver. I'm not just saying that because when Aaron Johnson's character first wears the kick-ass costume, he starts acting hard in the mirror, like Travis Bickle, it just has something to it which reminds me of Taxi Driver. Nicolas Cage's Big Daddy is so weird because he's the most loving father to his daughter but at the same time trying to train her up to become a lethal assassin. The action in the film is fantastic especially from Chloe Moretz's character Hit Girl. There's just so much to talk about. Being a lover of comic books as well I have to say this is definitely a must see from my perspective. One more minute to review The Blind Side, come on! about a rather large black guy who is cared for by a loving mother played by Sandra Bullock and her family to help him get better at school and get a college degree in football. This I found to be a truly moving and inspirational film, brilliant acting from Sandra Bullock who won an Oscar for a role as the caring but feisty mother Leanne. This isn't the tea jerker that I was expecting because after watching the trailer I thought that it would be one of those really sad films. Don't get me wrong, there were a couple of scenes which brought a tear to my eye, but the majority of the film has a light-hearted mood to it, with Sandra Bullock's character and the son stealing every scene that they're in. Overall, it's a great film, even though I know very little about American football, I did really enjoy it. Seven reviews in under ten minutes, biatches!